seven on the right. So I think the facet joint is fixed in a closed position. So the inferior facet of T6, so the inferior facet of T6 is fixed on the superior facet of T7. And we've got 118 facet joints within the vertebral column. So that joint, I say, is fixed closed on that joint. But we almost need to understand how do we get to that situation. Rather than putting a towel on T7 and just crack for the sake of cracking, yeah, we will just run through some assessment to say, I think through my assessment process, but I think that vertebra is fixed closed on the vertebra below. Yeah, because of what I'm going to show you. Now, the top of the page, you can see the type 1. Let's just recap. So according to Friot, so these are the Friot's laws, the principles, the laws of mechanics, motion. So then so it was divined by Harrison Friot, who was the only 1918. Okay, that's where it's all come from. So it's an anniversary, 100 years, so just over. Now, so neutral mechanics, according to him, the facets are idling, so they're not flexed, they're not extended, so they are neutral. So when you side bend, say, to the left, it induces couple motion to the right. When you side bend to the right, it induces couple motion and it rotates to the left. So you cannot side bend without rotation, and you cannot rotate without side bending. Okay, they are together. They are not isolated, yeah, they work in harmony, they're a marriage together. Okay, so you cannot change it. That's just and that's what the studies have done, yeah, from dead people, yeah, where they have a spine and they put them into position and they move it, and that's without the interaction of muscles, yeah. This is the interaction of the joints, okay, the physiology of the joint motion here. Now and then they said, well, let's extend the spine. So in extension, if you side bend, this is also a natural motion. Because if Steve said, John, I'm going to throw you a ball, catch the ball. Let's say it's off to my one side, okay? So I catch the ball over here. So for instance, Steve throws it to me. Rather than me going extension, I extend, but I rotate and I side bend to my right. So can you see the mechanic is natural to do that? So you still have extension, rotation, side bending. It's still coupled, but it's coupled to the same side now. If I go to pick up something from the floor, I might flex, I might rotate, and I might side bend to pick that up. And again, it is natural. So I'm flexing, rotating, side bending to the same side. But what's unnatural is for you to be fixed in that position of either extension. So you walk around like this, okay, or you walk around like this. Okay, because people do. You know, there is a video on YouTube where a guy walks in, He's 17 years old, he's, he's got a ridiculous amount of views, like 80 million more probably, um, where he's like flexed. Yeah? No one would treat him, but he went to see a Gonstead chiropractor in Australia. Yeah, you've probably seen him, where he's, he's talking about his sacrum, and he does like a manipulation on his sacrum, because he says it's the sacrum that's the problem, yeah, rather than the, the lumbar and things like that. But he was stooped, he, so he walked in like this. Okay? And he'd been like that for three months because he pulled out the tree stump, you might have seen that video. Yeah, it's quite popular on, on the Facebook. Um, but in terms of treatment, it was trying to improve his, his motion of the sacrum. Because if the sacrum has fixed backwards, the lumbar will what? Flex. It's gone into flexion. Okay? And if the sacrum has gone back to the right, then the lumbar will go forward to the left. Can you see that? So you could find that this, the sacrum's fault is why. And then if the lumbar has gone into flexion, so it's stuck in flexion, basically the spine cannot extend because the sacrum cannot mutate. All right? Yeah, so it's not a lumbar fault. It could be the sacrum's gone back, causing the lumbar to be fixed forward. Did he fix him? He did. Wow. Yeah, it took, I think it was about like 10 days. Wow. Yeah, so he probably would have one or two treatments per day. Yeah, he goes through that story about 10 minutes. Wow. Yeah, it's about 10 minutes. Uh, but you'll see it on there. Now, um, the second one, so you can see it's type 2. Now, the neck, I'm not going to, I'll explain the neck a little bit. Yeah, but it's not part of the course, but it's still, the neck is almost straightforward because the lumbar, depending on whether you're neutral or non-neutral, will go through two different um, motions. The cervical spine from C2, does, from C2 down to C7 only follows type 2 mechanics, okay, because it's all to do with, with the facet orientation. So, for instance, the neck, if you side bend the neck, say, to the left, it will induce rotation to the same side. It doesn't matter if you're extended, neutral or flex. The side bending and the rotation is always coupled to the same side. Okay, it's always coupled. So it's basically a type 2 mechanic within that sort of area. But is, um, there is a book who writes for the same publisher. There's two Maitlands in this field. Maitland, they're both called Jeffrey, but one's with a G, one's with a J. And Jeffrey Maitland is a rolfer based in California. And he wrote a book on spinal manipulation made simple. 
You should cross out, off that word at the end. Yeah, because there's nothing simple about it at all. All right? Um, but it's not much money. Six pound eight pound on, on Amazon. You can buy it. I think you can buy it as a Kindle book. Yeah, that sort of thing. But in there, he does talk about emotion testing. I do show it, not in this course, on my survival course. Um, so you have an understanding of how the neck moves. Yeah, and things like Because you're all treating patients. Um, but in terms of manipulation for the neck, the neck is almost easier in some respects. Because if you've had your neck manipulated before, do you remember the position someone like me would put your neck in? Yes. So what did Andre do? Andre, just do that one again. So can you see what he's doing? So can you see he is side bending to the right, but he's rotating which way? To the left, okay? So he is side bending to the right and rotating to the left. You can try that if you want to. You might find that it will feel resistance. You will feel bind. Okay, but as long as you don't feel bind on the opposite side, because you might find you a stretch of the tissue, what that means is, if I side bend to my right and rotate, I might feel it in my scalenes because you're over, say, side bending. You might feel it on the same side. Now, what are you doing to the neck? What are you? What mechanic are you inducing? What? So you are inducing a type one mechanic, and the neck naturally is a type two. Okay, so if you are trying to learn how to manipulate the neck, you have to understand what it does, okay, and then you have to go against its natural motion to get the bind. Because if I don't bind the neck, there's no lock. And if there's no lock, there's no cavitation. So you have to feel where the bind is, and that's the skill. Okay, and I would normally feel at my finger. I would say side bend you down to my finger, and I will slowly start to reduce rotation. Once I feel I'm happy in that position, I might perform a cavitation to cavitate, say, C3 on C4, for instance. But I would induce a type 1 mechanic into a neck that only does type 2. Yeah, so it's almost easier to learn in some ways because you've only got one motion. Okay, and then you just go against that natural motion. In, in the lumbar, it's different because you've got two. In the thorax, it's two. Yeah, and things like that. But we'll discuss that as we go through. Now, can you look at the very bottom of the page?